grab an umbrella because a shitstorm of bitching is coming your way. Joining me, the lion of YouTube, Chris Stuckman. The lion of YouTube? What does that even mean? You're the lion. We're gonna move on though. This episode's a bit different because we're actually arguing over which film is worse. X-Men The Last Stand versus Spider-Man 3. The cast of X-Men is unbeatable in my eyes, but I'm here to complain. So instead of focusing on what's great, who's cool, I'm going to talk about the new characters and how bad they butchered the old ones. Kind of seems like you're cheating a little bit there, Adam. I mean, you're already glossing over the greatness of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, Patrick Stewart's Xavier, or Ian McKellen's Magneto. I'm sorry, Chris. I thought this was my show. Is it yours now? Driss, is this, is this the Lions show? No, okay. No, I, no, it's not. Sorry. Sorry. Please, continue. Let's just start with Cyclops. He was barely used in the past films, but here he's unapologetically ripped from the film 15 minutes in. He barely has two minutes of screen time. You mentioned Xavier. Look what they did to him. Killing such a memorable character needs to be handled with extreme care and craft. It was utter bullshit. They have him slowly disintegrate like that vampire chick at the end of Blade 2 for no f***ing reason. He left his students and X-Men family at the mercy of one of the most powerful and uncontrollable mutants ever seen. Speaking of entirely wasted characters, what about Venom? One of the coolest villains in all of Spidey comic history and he's portrayed by Topher Grace aka Mark Ellis from Schmell's No. And he's killed by something that my grandmother does when she's trying to get loud kids out of her yard. Banging objects together. Jean Grey! Look what they did to my bride. Look what they did to my beautiful femke. My beautiful femke. <laughs> Jean Grey's rebirth as the Dark Phoenix should have been an entire movie on its own. Hell, it could have spanned three movies and become as epic as the Lord of the Rings. Don't fire me up, Adam. Don't you dare do it. Oh, it's happening. Chris Page imminent. Is that like a rampage, but with your name inserted in place of ramp? It's exactly what it is. Now Gwen Stacy, okay? She's very famous from the comics. She's a fan favorite. Yet in this film, she's just another Mary Jane Watson, a kind of damsel in distress, cutesy woman who doesn't really have much of anything to do. Tobey Maguire is likable as Spider-Man, but halfway through the movie, he turns into Emo Parker and starts dancing everywhere. One of the cool things they did do in this movie was bring Thomas Hayden Church on as Sandman. He was great as the character, but then he gets sidelined for the entire movie. And why in the hell did they give Kirsten Dunst two songs in this movie? I mean, it's a musical, for goodness sakes. Half of Spider-Man 3 is a musical. What about Angel? He's given this cool introduction before being completely wiped from the film until the stupid final act where he flies in out of f***ing nowhere to save the day. Our villains are an even sorrier bunch, with Juggernaut looking like a giant penis and everybody else having the superpower to jump high. Oh, let's not forget Pufferfish Man. Plus, you thought Peter Parker was a bad emo? Every one of these villains is dressed like a retired Evanescence member. But do they break out into a choreographed dance number twice? I think not, Adam. I think not. Gather around, kids. I'm going to tell you the story of X-Men Last Stand and how it was ruined by one asshole named Brett Ratner. All right, that's entirely not fair. Now I'm just being over the top. I could easily blame Fox for this. They rushed the script and the shooting schedule to hit a summer release. They could have waited for Brian Singer to get done ruining Superman Returns, but no, they had to go forward. They had to let this debauchery take place. There's actually quite a bit of controversy surrounding Spider-Man 3 as well. Sam Raimi has publicly said that Venom wasn't supposed to be in the movie and that Sony basically forced him to include a character that he didn't really want to be in the film, which is one of the reasons why he feels like this little tiny last minute addition. So because of that, I mean, a lot of this project, to me, doesn't feel like the director actually has as much heart in it because he's being forced to include story elements he didn't even want to have in the movie. So it's clear that both these films suffered from a massive amount of issues, but at least Spider-Man 3 was entertaining from an action standpoint. The fight against the second Green Goblin is cool, even with the Lord of the Rings rip-off shot. Plus, Sandman's visuals are still pretty impressive. 
So impressive that an entire city watches him in his final form giant Sandman creature monster thing. And they're just sort of like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll take that over a bunch of Hot Topic rejects jumping in the air like frogs. That was the final fight in X-Men. Not only that, but we have to see Magneto and Pyro throwing flaming cards at our heroes. That's the best they could conjure up. Car bombs. Look, there's no question that X3 is definitely the worst of the original trilogy, but there are still some emotionally strong moments in the movie. I mean, Logan had to watch Xavier die right before his eyes. He even had to kill his one true love. I mean, there is some powerful stuff in the film. Spider-Man 3 is not a total loss. We, we both know that. The final shot where our three friends from this franchise look off into the sunset in the most overused cliche on the planet it's still kind of touching. There was also some character growth by Peter this time. He was able to let the pain he felt for his uncle's death go by, in fact, letting the killer go. He made letting it go cool before Elsa did. That was a Frozen reference, so this should instantly get millions of views. Let's just move on to effects before I lose my mind. I'll decide when we move on. Which one of you douchebags did that? I hate you, the whole lot of you. X3 does have some pretty awesome effects. I mean, they have the danger room sequence with the decapitated sentinel head. I mean, the Golden Gate Bridge sequence. There's a lot of really cool fight sequences in the film that involve a lot of CGI. Wolverine's claws don't look as bad as they do in the eventual X-Men Origins Wolverine, so at least they're that. Spider-Man 3, however, has a few great sequences, ranging from an insane first confrontation with Green Goblin to the Sandman chase. The ending against Venom is short and dumb, but it's, it's slick enough, it works, kind of. Rami still knows how to handle that Spidey cam with style, and there's no shortage of high-flying scenes that showcase our web-slinger. Can we just bring up the dance number again, please? I'll raise you a juggernaut, bitch! Don't you know who I am? I'm the juggernaut, bitch! They should have cast Jesse Pinkman for that line. Now that's something we can agree on. This is actually one area where Brett Ratner didn't screw up. He seeked out John Powell to do the score, and I'm a huge fan of this composer's work. His compositions are very strong and really hit hard, especially in that first encounter with the Phoenix. All that said, the original Spider-Man trilogy still has one of the best superhero scores to date. And that was thanks to Danny Elfman who did not compose the music for Spider-Man 3. That was Christopher Young. Thus, the music was not as strong, despite the fact that Christopher Young did do a good job with the score. And did I mention that Kirsten Dunst has two songs in this film? You did, yes. Then why is this even a debate? I'm not sure it is at this point. Chris and I think X3 is a bad movie, plain and simple. The film has no subtlety to it. The emotions are just hammered over your heads because it can't be bothered to take its time to build up some steam. The only good news out of all this cluster f is that X3 can be forgotten now. It's no longer relevant thanks to Days of Future Past. So we've spent a lot of time here together ragging on these two superhero flicks, but I'm gonna be honest here. I don't hate either of these movies. I think they're vastly disappointing, however. Spider-Man 3 tarnishes what could have been a fantastic trilogy because of a lot of stupid behind-the-scenes headbutting between Sam Raimi and Sony. He got a film that, as a director, he's not even proud of, and that's sad. Both of these films could have been much better. Yes, there are worse superhero films out there, Batman and Robin, for instance, but as a film franchise, it really tarnished those trilogies. Maybe now I could go back and enjoy it because I know it's a standalone, crazy, stupid mess of nonsense. But no, no, I can't do that because I remember I was at that theater the day that film came out. I was in those seats watching my favorite mutants get drugged through the mud, being hammered down by a shoddy script and terrible direction. Oh, I remember and I'll never forget. X3 was my 9-11. That was too much. The good news, Adam, is that you're not alone. We all lived through it together. Anyway, Chris, I want to thank you for taking the time to feud with me. It's always a blast getting other fellow YouTubers to collaborate, come together, talk about movies in a fun, carefree manner. I just want to say, all kidding aside, this was a lot of fun to do. Thank you very much for asking me to do this. I had a great time with it. You guys can find me at youtube.com slash chrisstuckman with two N's at the end. 
I love to review movies and games. And thank you very much for having me on the show. I'll come back anytime you want me because I like to do the rants. You guys made us go back, relive a personal hell. Now it's your turn. You watch the video, you decide which film is in fact worse, Spider-Man 3 or X3. Sound off in the comments, subscribe, like the video, and remember, this is more than just reviews, this is movie feuds. Hey, can we trademark the lion of YouTube? I don't know what it means, but I, I like it.